Okay. Um, oxygen and hemoglobin dissociation curve. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, just a couple of um, big uh, concepts I'm going to show you right before I talk about this graph. Um, it's just talking about um, diffusion and gas exchange, okay? So gas exchange pretty much just follows, uh, follows a pressure gradient um, from high to low, okay? So I'm just going to give you, actually what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take this off. All right, so here, let's just say that this is our oxygen in the lungs, okay? This is a, we have a lot of oxygen, high oxygen. This is our blood. Here we have our hemoglobins. Hemoglobin is HB, okay? We have low oxygen partial pressure in here. So low oxygen PO2, all right? Since we have a lot of oxygen in our lungs, it's going to want to leave. It's just, it's cramping its style. It, it's got to go somewhere where there's not a lot of oxygen because they don't want to be bothered. So what our oxygen is going to do is it's going to follow our gradient from high to low and go into the blood and bind with our hemoglobin, making it oxyhemoglobin, okay? So that would be oxyhemoglobin. Globin. And as you can see, that's what this percentage on the left-hand side of this chart is. Okay? So at the lungs, we have a high affinity for oxygen. We have a lot of oxygen in our lungs, and it needs to leave. Okay? So now, I'm going to draw that's supposed to be a muscle. Okay? That's really bad. And here's our blood. And here is our oxyhemoglobin. I'm just going to draw X's, okay? So now, at our tissue, at our tissue, we have a low PO2. We have a low percentage of oxygen in the tissue. This is for um, being at rest. And we have a high PO2 here. Since we're high in the blood now, it wants to get dropped off at the tissue because the tissue needs the oxygen in order to perform exercise, okay? So that's a big concept that I want you to know going into this graph. So, oxygen just wants to follow the pressure gradient, okay? And every gas has got a different gradient that it follows, but the main concept is, is that we go from high concentration to low concentration, okay? Now here we have the disassociation curve, and I'm going to put my factors back on the board. I don't even know if I got this right. What is it? Two, three, two. Okay. These are our three factors that can alter our oxygen and hemoglobin um, relationship, okay? So, on to the graph. I'm just going to explain the graph first, and then I'm going to bring each one of these factors in separately so you can get the understanding of the concept. This is our association between oxygen and hemoglobin. This line is going this way, okay? So that's how I want you to look at it. Now, at 100%, that's where that's our lungs. And then at 20, that's us at exercise, that's our tissue, okay? So, our lungs has a higher um, oxygen and hemoglobin saturation and oxygen content because at the lungs, that's where our air likes to be, that's where we need it in order to breathe. But the thing about it is, is that our oxygen isn't unloaded there. We don't want it to be unloaded. And when I mean unloaded, I mean that our hemoglobin and our oxygen, that oxygen gets dumped off somewhere. So that's what I mean by unloading, okay? At exercise, this is our tissue. We want our relationship between oxygen and hemoglobin to 
be less so that oxygen gets dumped off at the tissue, okay? So, I'm going to bring in pH, okay? So pH can affect our um, affinity between oxygen and hemoglobin two ways, okay? A decrease a decrease in our pH, so I'm moving the line to the right, a decrease pH is going to weaken the bond between oxygen and hemoglobin, which is going to make oxygen um, unloaded, be unloaded at the tissues easier. And you're probably like, why do we want it to be unloaded easier? Well, we want it to be unloaded easier at the tissue because when we're exercising, we need that oxygen to keep up with the amount of work that each muscle group or single individual muscle is doing, okay? And the more intense the exercise get, the lower that pH will get because it's, it needs more oxygen quicker, okay? So the more I shift this to the right, the, the quicker I'm going to be able to unload my oxygen at the tissues, okay? Now, if I go backwards and I increase my pH, I increase my pH, it's going to make the relationship between ox oxygen and hemoglobin greater. So it's not going to be able to unload um, as nicely and as smoothly as it would be as if I had a lower pH, okay? That's all you really need to know. The bottom line of this chart is that you want this line to move to the right to make that relationship between oxygen and hemoglobin weaker so it can be unloaded at the tissues more efficiently, okay? So, bear with me here. Actually, I'm just going to go over it with a black marker. So, now I'm going to bring temperature into the factor, okay? Don't even pay attention to the pH product anymore, okay? So, temperature is the same way. You want, the, you want it to make a shift in the right, but that shift to the right between the relationship is going to be due to an increase in temperature, okay? So I'm just going to go over the blue with the black, okay? So now this is an increase in temp. All right? Same concept as it was with pH. It's just the increase in temperature is going to decrease that bond so we can unload the oxygen at the muscles quicker. Now if I move it, if I decrease my temperature, if I decrease my temperature, it's just going to make that bond stronger. And it's going to be harder to unload at the tissues. Now, this was all done at the tissues, so if you, could, if you could say that when I increase my temperature, it weakens the bond in order for the oxygen to be unloaded at the tissues, but it's also going to weaken my bond at the lungs, and you don't really want that. But this whole, I'm, I'm focusing my standpoint of this curve at the muscles, because that's what I'm really more concerned about with this. So... Decrease in pH and an increase in temperature will move the line to the right. That's what we want. A high pH and a low temperature is going to strengthen that bond, and that's not what we want in the tissue. Now, there's one more little factor that plays in to um, moving the curve, but it's not really that important, is the 2,3-DPG. Um, um, so byproduct of red blood cells, comes from glycolysis, but this bad boy deals mainly with um, 
deals with altitude change, okay? And that's the really big deal about it. It's going to be the same way. It wants to move the, the curve to the right, but it really doesn't have a big factor in doing that. But it comes into play more when you're at um, different altitudes with exercise, okay? So that is the oxygen-hemoglobin dissociation curve.